Listen, just ignore GitHub Copilot because this editor that I will show you today is the best way to code with AI. I'm talking about Cursor, a code editor that has been built thinking about how to use AI to be more productive when we are coding. And the reality is that Cursor has been trending on communities like the JavaScript or C++ or Ruby, and you can see everyone trying to use it. So I have to try it with C Sharp. So in this video, I will show you how Cursor can help you as a C Sharp developer and why I think that the IDEs that we are using nowadays need to learn with it. Because to be honest, I'm super impressed. So let's do it. The first and obvious question is how to get Cursor. And the answer is simple, just go to cursor.com. There you can find the button to download it, install it. And one thing that you will notice is that it's quite similar to VS Code. Why? In fact, Cursor is a fork of VS Code. And why is it a fork of VS Code? Because the path of bringing AI into your code editor through an extension is something that we have tried already. We have done it with Copilot, for example, and with many other technologies that bring AI into your code editor. So I believe that the team building Cursor has the need to bring something different that was not able to do it through a simple extension. So they forked VS Code, which is a huge advantage because now you can come to a code editor that you already know that has a huge ecosystem of extensions that you can take advantage of them as well. And you can use the editor that you are already familiar with. Let me say that Cursor is closed sourced. There's a free version that you can use. So if you want to explore it, you can do it right away. So first step, download it, install it, grab a coffee and get back to it. So welcome to Cursor. As you can see, it looks like VS Code. It's quite similar. The only thing that I've done so far here is besides opening a project was to install the .NET tools. So I decided to install the C Sharp development kit, just that. If you normally use other extensions in your projects when we are using VS Code, you can bring them as well. As you can see, we can access the existing VS Code extensions and bring them into Cursor. So let's see some of the cool things that you can do with Cursor. One of the things that I like about Cursor is that you can use the AI in the context of the code that you are using. As an example, imagine you are working on this piece of code and you want to change something in multiple lines inside of this region. One thing that you can do is to use the common K. I think that in Windows should be the control K. And you can see that I will have a chance to chat with the AI in the context of that code snippet. But it's not only that. For example, imagine that I want to say that instead of returning false, I want to throw an exception on that case. So I can say throw an exception instead of return false. You will submit it. It will show you the differences, what is changing. It's changing that for this if statement, it's throwing an exception. It crafts the exception message brilliantly. It uses a different exception message depending on the if statement. And the cool thing is that I'm chatting with it in the context of the code that I'm using. Instead of needing to open a side chat to talk with it. And now I can go line by line and decide, for example, common Y, I accept this one, I can reject another one, or I can simply say, okay, let's accept them all. Let's see another example. We could pick those two if statements and ask the AI to bring the request ID into the exception message, for example. So let's quickly do that. We can say once again, common K, add the request ID as to the exception message. Enter, and you can see how quickly I added the request ID as an input into that message. Okay, and it's formatting the message as well without needing to go to every single line. So now I can either accept or for example, reject them all. This is one of the ways that you can interact with the AI, but you can also do the common L or control L and that will open a chat window to the right. So let me move myself here and you can see here on the right that now we have our chat window and that as well can be in the context of a selection. So let's remove this. If we pick a few lines of code and we do the common L, it will open the chat and add that code into the chat. But for example, I can keep adding things into the chat. For example, I could come here and say, okay, add to the chat 
using the command shift L this line of code as well. So now you can see that I have two snippets attached to the chat. So now I can start asking questions like, can we refactor this? And you can see that it will suggest the things that we can do, give all the proper instructions, something that you are used to by using Copilot. But we can take this to a different level. Let's see. One thing that we can do is to give context to cursor. We can say to cursor what types of things we are trying to build. Who are we? What types of conventions do we want to follow? For that, let's go to a website that is extremely useful. Go to cursor.directory and there you can find some things that we will copy into cursor. So we can search for the language that we'll be using, for example, C sharp. And in the C sharp one, we have several instructions here. And you can see that the first two are about Unity. You can see there, you can see right here as well. But that one is a bit more generic. So it's that one that I will use. And what we have there? There we can find that uh, the instructions are saying that, okay, we are a senior.NET backend developer. It says the types of things that we are an, an expert on. It will say that, for example, please write idiomatic C sharp, prefer link over lambda expressions, how to name variables and methods, naming conventions, C sharp version that we want to use, syntax formatting, how to handle errors, things about API design. We can see a lot of things here. And this is a document that you can keep evolving. You can adapt this to your own version. So for now we will use exactly this text. And how do we apply this? We'll copy it, okay? And then you can go here into the about and you can find the instructions on how to do it. So basically we just need to create a dot cursor rules file inside of our project. And then what will happen is that this content will be fit into the AI model that we are using when we interact with the chat. So let's do exactly that. Let's go to cursor and create our cursor rules. So now when we open the chat, it will feed into the model all that text that we have just bring into that file. So if I want to open the chat, I can use the commands that I'm used to from VS Code. For example, I can open the command window and then go and decide, okay, I want to open the chat to the side. And I can, for example, keep working on an existing one, see previous chats, create a new one. And one interesting thing about this experience is that I can do something as the following, okay? I don't like how the create to do feature is implemented. There's something that doesn't seem right. Please help me refactoring the create to do CS, request validator CS, and to do dot, dot CS. As you can see, I'm tagging files while I'm doing this. So I'm limiting the scope, but at the same time, I'm opening the scope of things that I want the model to take a look on. So now when I enter, it will provide suggestions having the context of all of those files. And as you can see, we will see here, so the create to do, what it is proposing to do, we can see fully later and for the to do as well. And if we go down, there's even an explanation on what is happening here, okay? What's the differences here? So I can go one by one and for example, while I'm doing this, I might spot something that I'm not sure why is doing it. And for example, here I can say, why do you edit a private constructor? Okay, and we'll explain that it's because of EF core and it brings all the explanation why this helps. But it's pretty cool. So if I'm happy with it, let's say I apply everything. And if I build a solution, it still compiles. As you already know, AI can be extremely useful when you want to bring a new feature. So for example, let's say here that I want to add a new feature to support tags on each to do. But one good thing to do when you are working with AI is to feed as much context as possible. So being a developer that knows this code base, I can be a bit more explicit. For example, let's add a validation to the request validator, add a property to the to do, and I can give 
other ints to make sure that the output will be the best as possible. So for example, I could say, okay, make sure that existing DTOs or contracts are updated as well. Okay, so let's see the changes that are proposed. And one interesting thing is this small detail here. Notice that it brings this existing properties here or this existing methods here. The fact that the suggestion has a clear view of the deltas, the increments to my code is extremely valuable. I don't need anymore to try to understand the methods that will be changed, what will not be changed, what I need to bring and apply to the source code. So it's quite clear here. And something that is extremely interesting is the fact that if I'm not happy with the strategy that is being used here, I can change the AI model that I will be using. So is using cloth by default that I have to confess that I'm extremely impressed with the results. But for example, let's say that is not working in the way that I want. I'm trying to fix a bug and it's not helping me. I can always come here and say, okay, I don't want to use Cloud for this one. Let's use ChatGPT to ask a few more questions. For example, I don't like the way that this method is. Let's try to do it in a simpler way. And this time who's replying is a different model. So Claude picks this previous suggestion, feeds it into another model that will use a different reasoning to that source code. In cases where you are trying to address a bug, that might be extremely useful. And you might have noticed that this one was a bit slower than the other one. So you can also use that as a way to decide which one do you want to use. And since we are talking about bugs, that's something that I also really like in Cursor. For example, we can go to a class, pick all the code, open the chat and do something as simple as this, okay? Do I have any bug here? And the model will go through the source code and will try to spot things that can go wrong. For example, this argument might be null or I don't have a check to make sure that the number of days until due date is lower than zero okay so if you are addressing a bug you have the idea that it might be on that file it might be on a set of lines that you have in the given method you can ask cursor do i have any bug here okay and it you will try to find what is happening not only that but i can also use the same strategy and instead of saying bug let's reject all the things what if i say explain not only that but what if instead of trying to find if there's a bug here I could do something like this. Okay, let's go to the chat and ask him to explain the code. Let's go back to my new favorite model. And you can see that it will have an extensive description of what is happening. I can see that it tries to explain the rules that are here. Okay, how is it implemented? The calculation of a given parameter. So this can be extremely useful, especially when you are working with legacy code, for example, something that you don't know or you just join a given code base, like you want to contribute to a given open source project, you don't know what is happening inside of a given file, you can use this to explain you how something is working. Another thing that I really like about Cursor is the fact that it can provide suggestions not only for the current line that I'm currently positioned, but also the changes that are needed on another line that will come after. For example, let's say that I want to change this if statement with a switch, okay? So I could come here, say switch, and I'll notice that is already predicting the changes to the other lines, okay? This, is, will, this change will not only change the if statement where I'm positioned currently, but also it knows the changes that needs to do to the other if statements. So now I just need to press tab and you can see the change. So if I keep pressing tab, it will remove the code that is not needed anymore, what is extremely powerful, to be honest. Another thing is that you can search the code using AI, for example. So imagine that you have a huge code base, you don't know where things are, you are not familiar with that code base, there's a lot of files and you want to find where something is happening. For example, where do I have the configuration of my database adapter? So I can come here and say, find the post Press the I configuration at, and we can provide, for example, a file and say it should be somewhere here. And you can see searching the folder is reading the files and it's trying to find where the thing 
is, you find out is in this extension file and it's right there. You can even say the line of code that is doing it, okay? Also spot that I have an L check for Postgres as well, where it's pretty cool. Another typical problem when using something like Copilot or any other AI is the fact that often the recommendations are based on previous versions of frameworks of uh, libraries that you are using. And Cursor has one feature that is pretty cool. That is, imagine that you are using something like XUnit, for example. You can go to the chat and say, okay, regarding docs, and you can see there's a list of docs here already. You can say, let's add a new doc. Let's go to the browser. We go to XUnit, find the documentation, grab the link, go back to cursor, add the link. Okay, it's regarding XUnit, perfect. And now we can start asking questions like, for example, how to ignore a test. And you can see that he tried to find inside of that documentation. He looked into it. He understands that we need to provide the skip parameter to the fact or the theory gives an example how to use the categories to, to filter as well by using traits. And he understood that by taking a look into the documentation. Now imagine that you have something that you want to do and you are not sure if that's the best way to do in the latest version of that library. You can always register the documentation there and you will try to find this, the answer through that documentation page, what is extremely powerful. The same way that you can do it by instead of asking a given documentation, we could say how to run tests in sequence using xunit.net and you can ask the web and it's basically searching the web, trying to find an answer for that currently in this moment. Something that you usually don't do or you don't expect to do when you are interacting with AI. I have a few more things to show you. Let's take this to another level. So let's open the chat and let's do the following, okay? Let's add a web project using ASP.NET MVC. Should have page to create to-dos that calls the existing API. As you are used to do on GitHub Copilot, it will provide a set of instructions, things that you should do, files that you need to create, all of that thing, let me quickly do that. So I applied all the instructions from the AI and I came up with this MVC project. You can see this is exactly what is coming out of those instructions. I confess that I had to change some namespaces, but besides that is exactly the same code. And now let's take a look into a really cool thing. Let's go to Excalibur and let's try to come up with what should be our task manager, okay? The way that we create a task. So. Let's do the following. We should have a title that should have an input with the name title. And we want to have a checkbox that will say if it's done or not. Okay. Something as simple as this. This could be so much more complex than it is, but also we need a button here saying something like save or add something like that. Let's change the background for that one. Okay. And now let's take a print screen. Let's set the screenshot there. And then let's say update the create.chtml, so the razor page, to look like the drawing from the image. Let's see. Bad news. I'm recording a video about cursor and cursor is down. Isn't it funny? So I think I will go for a run and maybe when I get back here, it's already online and we can keep going with this. See you in a moment. So I'm back and looks like cursor is back online once again. Once we upload the image and ask the AI model to update the CreateCS HTML, this is what will happen. I will grab some instructions to apply to the CreateCS HTML. Let's apply it. Okay, accept them all, save it. There's also some CSS that we can apply as well. So let's go to the CSS, apply it there, save it. Okay. Let's make sure that the style sheet is already included in the layout. Is it there? Let's start the application. Let's get back to the page and refresh it and look what happened. This is exactly what we designed here. And the cool thing is that in the same way that we have done this through a quick mock-up with Excalidraw, you can go online, search for 
an image of the form that you would like to have the same style you can design it on figma you can do it in several different ways and it picked most of the things right what is extremely impressive at least to me there's one last thing that i want to show you and for that let's use markdown just so i can show you two things at the same time so let's create a markdown file notes.md something like that okay doesn't matter one cool thing is that you can use cursor in several languages in markdown as well that might not be impressive to you but now imagine the following imagine that you are collecting data about an incident okay so we can say that we had number of requests 100 number of errors during that time let's say we had five duration one hour now you can do something like the following go to the line with the number of errors for example common k add the percentage of errors and mention the duration we accept and notice that okay there's this small mistake of the duration maybe if this duration was before it wouldn't happen but notice how we calculated the five percent correctly so usually ai is quite strange when doing math but in this case it was perfect and also he had in consideration that it was 100 requests so let's do something slightly different now okay something like let's remove this and say for the number of requests where the status code was 500 okay five uh, number of requests where status code was 404 let's say it was three and 200 was 92. Notice he was capable enough to understand that I needed to add 92 successful ones to make the 100th, right? So 92 plus 3 plus 5. Now we can do the same thing that we have done before and say, okay, add the percentages. Isn't that impressive? I think it is. So let's change the number of requests to something like 5, something like that. Okay, and let's do something like number of requests with number of remaining requests okay can you see that it's doing the math okay so let's not do that part and let's do the following okay let's ask him please update the percentages and complete the table what do you say i think it's quite amazing and if if you want to confirm the math please go do it okay i i i think i trust him to to be honest, this is something that usually we will not trust in AI. When I'm using ChatGPT, we know there's a lot of memes on how things go wrong, but this is amazing. And in something like programming, this mathematical precision is something that is important. There are many other use cases that we could be here doing that I think that AI can be extremely useful, like enriching documentation. For example, if you want to generate the XML docs for your methods is something that AI can easily do and I believe that this tool is amazing for that. Another option that is quite interesting is when you have a feature like how to add uh, a given task into your system you might want to do kind of like the same thing but for the update you can ask the AI model to do that and help you to do that. You just say please let's create the update and let's paste ourselves in the files for the add feature what is a great idea but that leads to the question will i keep using this i'm not sure that i will adopt cursor as my as my full-time id that i'll be always using for a simple reason i think that the way that the dotnet space the dotnet ecosystem works it's easier and you are more productive with uh, ides like visual studio or jetbrains rider and historically VS Code has been something that doesn't match that well with the experience that you have when you come from VS or Rider. And that is one of the reasons why I never moved into VS Code. And this editor is mostly VS Code. So I'm not sure yet that the AI features will convince me to move into here. But what I think is that if JetBrains, Rider or Visual Studio start looking into things like this, into this product, and try to bring inspiration on how the AI should be embedded in the IDE, they can become amazing. Honestly, I will give it a try for a while to, um, with Cursor. 
and see wh what it takes me. Especially this incident of seeing things failing while I was running it. It's something that I'm not that happy with it. During the process, I realized that, that they don't even have a status page to understand if there's something wrong or not. So it's quite a, a new product, but I'm extremely excited with the, the future. It's, it's the first time that I see an IDE using AI in a way that made sense to me. Using Copilot nowadays, I have the feeling that is something that we have brought on top of the IDE instead of being built for developers. It's like a, a third party add-on. And this is the thing that I like the most, to be honest. I think you should take some time now and play with it. Download the free version, give it a try, and let me know in the comments what do you think about it. I would love to hear from you. And in meanwhile, you should watch this video right here where I share with you a feature that likely you are still not using it on your IDE and it's amazing.